Oh, it's all popping off, but who's in the wrong here? You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Hey guys, what's poppin'? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan, back at the desk today to do a sort of discussion on, of course, the Chelsea Supporters Trust's letter, open letter to Chelsea Football Club, the owners. It was replied by the Chelsea CEO, Chris Jurasek. Uh, and since there's been a lot of media response, and this right here, this piece of content, is a media response to the media response, getting quite meta. Uh, Simon Jordan absolutely laid into the Chelsea fans uh, for this, talking about, you know, the sense of entitlement, perhaps not being lucid to what actually is going on. The club was nearly liquidated two years ago, and now we've spent a billion pounds, and you're upset about that. Um, Lots to get into and talk about here. I'm not going to cite verbatim what Jordan said, but I'm going to, like, talk about the gist of his position. I'll read you a little bit of the... um, Chelsea supporters cl- uh, trust uh, their letter as well. I'm not going to cite the Chris Jurassic um, response because it's kind of like it's a bit of a nothing letter in my opinion. But we're going to get into it today. It's going to be interesting. Um, generally, I seem to be alternating between the desk and the office, like the studio office, daily here. So there's all kinds of different content and you're welcome to jump on board if you like it simply by subscribing, hitting the bell if you choose to subscribe, um, and dropping a like, because that's nice, that's helpful to me as a content creator. And it takes a second. Liked and done. By the way, obviously this is my living room, you can see my kitchen behind me. These are tomato plants, guys. Don't get any funny ideas. I'm not a young man anymore, though people do certain things of all ages. But yeah, I've got an allotment that I uh, attend to like pretty much every day and I'm propagating tomato plants. I know I look like the guy who perhaps isn't propagating tomato plants right now, but that's what they are, I'm telling you. I promise you. Um, all right, so yes, the Chelsea Supporters Trust, um, like many Chelsea fans, are not happy with the current state of affairs with Chelsea. Of course, we've been underperforming on the pitch. There's probably been a few things in between as well. Just the unrest with the manager in terms of the lack of a relationship with the Chelsea fans. I think li- little things like... You know, the promotion of the Argyle film was a bit of a weird moment, wasn't it? Although that will be fleeting and won't really matter. And we know the, as as the uh, Chris Jurassic and uh, Chelsea have said, they want to maximise all forms of revenue at Chelsea before they put the prices up. But Chelsea have put prices up on tickets. Um, they've stopped subsidising coaches for and stuff like that. And things that this is what the Chelsea Supporters Trust uh, has done. I'm going to cite an article by Steinberg. Well, he quotes, basically, on The Guardian, uh, some of the stuff from the uh, Chelsea Supporters Trust. But they are basically... They worded it like we are in a position or a danger of irreversible toxicity, which I don't necessarily agree with. Um, but let's read. They said um, the Chelsea Supporters Trust have said Chelsea had, quote, become a laughing stock on and off the pitch since being bought by the uh, Blue Co Consortium. Uh, the current feeling among Chelsea supporters, in our opinion, is at its lowest since the early 1980s. While this may be expected with our current run of form and position on the league table, a significant number of supporters that we speak to are quick to express the concerns that the lack of any public-facing vision from the new ownership has led to an overwhelming sense of helplessness. Bang. So this is where I align. People, like, sometimes think I'm, like, too impartial, right? And um, maybe I try and be as a content creator, delivering you like the news, but not, I don't want to, sw- I'm very, everyone does it because we've all got opinions, but I don't want to sway people too much. I want you all to generate your own opinions. Um, I am kind of lucid to why we are not good at the moment. I think a lot of it is expected that a lot of perhaps some fans don't agree with or see. Um, I'm not like massively pro pro the Chelsea owners, despite me agreeing with a lot of the stuff they're doing. Um, and I'm not like, you know, 
potently potch out or anything like that. But one thing that I think every Chelsea fan aligns on, regardless of your inclination, is this, just friggin' talk to the fans, you know, um, send a, a let an open letter, and, and not just Chris Jurassic's sort of response, but like, a, a, because he isn't... He, he took so much heat, the Chelsea CEO, for not being a football fan. I, I've come out here and said, I don't give a monkeys, mate. If he makes Chelsea money and does what he's supposed to do, what Clearleg brought him in to do well, then great. You know, you can be just a diehard ballerina fan. Do you know what I mean? I've absolutely no problem with that. I would like people around the actual club that work sporting stuff obviously the sporting directors need to like football but you know what i mean around stanford bridge those people not in an office somewhere trying to make us money that's what i care about and the fabric the culture of the club within the walls of stanford bridge in cobham you know that's what that's what's important to me um anyway i've gone off on a slight tangent now i'm going to keep reading uh, this for the moment but yeah i do agree with that like you know not the ceo but the sporting directors or indeed the owners to, to express, look guys, this has been rough, but here is where we are. We got a very short statement at the end of last season, I believe, but that was a kind of like, bleh, nothing, nothing moment. Um, support, the, the, the quote from the CST goes on, supporters are saying that there are currently seems to be a fast growing lack of trust from much of the fan base, especially match goers towards the board, partially due to severely limited communications. Many supporters have significant concerns over the future of our club. Yes, 100%. I think I think every supporter has concerns of the future because it's just where we are. Since the sanctions, since the you know the club being sold, since not knowing, it, there was always been uh, concerns about the future of the club. That has been that has been remained. Um, these new owners haven't come in and been like, we will you know rel- relinquish all your concerns for the future. I don't think any owners could have done that. And bear in mind, let's remember the alternatives: the Ricketts family and all that kind of stuff. You know, they they might have done better. Who knows? Or I don't know. Pagliuca, the guy who owns the Boston Celtics also was one of them, wasn't he? But um, I don't don't have trust in any of the alternatives personally. But like, yes, the concerns are naturally there for not just the current reasons, but what predates Chelsea. Um, And we'll talk about Simon Jordan a bit more in detail in a moment. But what he said was, you know, you know, your rich daddy, he's gone. He referenced the his affiliations with the Russian government which is not something I'm I'm going to, going to talk about in today's videos but you know that happened he's gone he's not coming back so don't he he can't be a reference point at the moment you know Chelsea is a successful institution that should be able to perpetuate itself because of its natural revenue and hopefully increased revenue which is the you know the idea that we do but um, he's gone, so we're going to be concerned because we were we were used to being fans of a certain of a club run in a certain way with certain expectations, and uh, and that's gone. So yeah, the the amount of good that could be done with the sporting director and say, look, guys, this is rough. You must understand this is the plan. But I'm trying. I'm not involved in running a football club, so I don't understand what there might be potentially reasons not to do that. Um. I don't know in terms of like you know buying and selling other institutions to know publicly that you're prepared to tell your business strategy out. I I'm being presumptuous and speculative here, but but the, it would just do the fans the world of good for some communication. You know, the quote goes on: "The views of a quiet few have become a vocal expression. A uh, much larger number of Chelsea supporters at present at the Brentford game. Much of our recent dialogue with supporters reveals a lack of belief in the decision makers at the top of the club. The current mood among supporters is critically low and cannot be ignored. I'm sure it isn't being ignored, by the way." The feeling the club has become a laughing stock, uh, both on and off the pitch. And yes, yeah, I, that, that's true because we're underperforming. You know, it's what happens to Man United when you're underperforming. The uh, the people laugh at you. But again, this is like another moment where in that you know talk sport clip, Simon Jordan scoffed like, "Yeah, because you're underperforming, you know." But you got to a cup final. You're still there. You could finish in the upper echelons of the Premier League table. You're in a developing project with young players you know 
sort of take your medicine a little bit. Do you know what I mean? The Chelsea Supports Trust regretfully believes that we were, we are close to, if not already experienced, a significant shift in supporter opinion that could result in irreversible toxicity. Now, look, this was scoffed at also by Simon Jordan, but I think this is coming from a good place from the Chelsea Supports Trust because I use the example of the Glazers at Manchester United like... They got to the point where when they're doing good things, because they believe that's the best point of protest, they score a goal, they sing, we want Glazers out, you know, they, um, because they're so desperate to get their owners out, which are, you know, weren't going, they brought in Ineos or whatever, um, and <laughs> ironically and incidentally, Ineos are quite similar to the Chelsea ownership in terms of their, you know, sporting direction, bringing in infrastructure and stuff. Um, but yeah, there was a sort of like the spectre at every Man United game, especially at Old Trafford, of the glazes out and um, they're not going anywhere, as will these new owners not go anywhere. But what it does is it just creates this, yeah, I guess to a degree, like they're saying, irreversible toxicity. And the, <laughs> it's a shame they probably couldn't reference the glazes out uh, movement in this letter because that would be a great example and I think they're right to sort of highlight that that potential you know happening almost irrespective of results on the pitch unless the situation improves this seems likely to manifest itself more uh, in targeted chanting especially at televised games which owners very much care about because uh, it's the optics isn't it and quite possibly more organized overt and impact forms of protest by some sections of the fan base uh, and they talk about obviously price increases as well uh, they reference uh, distaste towards the board i actually think we need to be a little bit um mindful the chelsea board is actually quite good i think remember it doesn't remember what the chelsea board was previously it was like to a degree it was like Romans goons do you know what I mean like no one you talk about no people are having a go at Jurassic for not um being a football fan but like we have like you know Barbara Sharon Danny Finkelstein on the board this is like really intelligent positive moves we've made we've made a board fit for purpose for Chelsea that are communicative with the fans those those are and actually the Chelsea supporters trust goes on to say yes the communication with us is great and in Chris Jurassic's response it was it wasn't like answering it was very pff, I don't know like admin -y. I don't know how to pr sort of but it's like a politician's response like responding being respectful but not actually responding do you know what I mean uh like not actually addressing the points that they highlighted but like says look we want to uh, do well and do better than the previous regime and we we pride ourselves on this communicative um way of uh, operating which the chelsea supporters trust responded and was like yeah yeah look we appreciate that you know we speak to danny all the time he's a chelsea fan a uh, die hard and he understands what it means to be chelsea he's on the board the old roman abramovich board was like ten and he's like he's like lawyer like tenenbaum and bruce buck and you know chelsea fans didn't like these guys you know it was, it was like Roman's mob boys, you know, and like, you know, and th that time of football was gone, not just because the owner's gone because he was sanctioned for geopolitical reasons, but that time is gone. You need to run a football club in a big boy way now. You just need to. Look at the profit and sustainability rules finally coming home to roost and clubs sh crapping themselves top to bottom all over the league, like everywhere. Everyone, this wasn't happening before. Roman was, even though we were operating in a time of financial fair play, Roman was getting away with the ways he was operating. You can't do that anymore now. It's a different time. You know, it's a new era of football where you've got to run a club properly. When Chelsea was sold by Rain Group, group the new potential buyers, the different consortiums, were very much aware of that. None more aware than Blue Co. That's just what it is. It sucks. I want to win football, man. This, this, this being a friggin' where are we? 11th from the Premier League table? This wasn't part of the plan. And when you spend a billion pounds on players, that's not part of the plan, you know? And they wouldn't want us to be here. So let's reference this talk sport video a little bit. They actually play an audio clip from Todd Bowley speaking the last... I think it was the last time he spoke 
publicly in a in a conference uh, talking about like football is the greatest global sport in the world um it's he explained why the, the 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 sport is is better in terms of player trading and buying talent he says uh, london is the best city in the world and we've got the best real estate in london uh, with Chelsea he could have also said that with Chelsea we're the only London club to win a European Cup we've got multiple <laughs> so it's that but he was kind of like talking like that this is what we are as Chelsea saying look it's not how we want at the moment but we're in for the long term uh, we believe we, the fans aren't happy because they want to win we want to win uh, and we believe in the long term we will win and we're in this for the long term that was kind of like and you know it was it was not the most comforting words but it's if you but if you are inclined to believe him then it it could be comforting do you know what i mean but simon jordan goes on he goes off a little bit in this in this video saying look wow 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 you want to go back to the 80s when you were playing in the seven the second division before like you know your sugar daddy came in who has been since been sanctioned and said you know negative stuff about our previous owner and you know, the reasons why he's no longer owner of Chelsea. He says, look, you haven't got him anymore. You've got these new guys that are willing to spend a billion pounds on players to try and make you revitalise and do this. You know, you've lost a few games. You've reached these finals. You have you could do better at the end of the season and things could come together. Um, but this is not a dark time for Chelsea. And he kind of said, look, he, could, <laughs> he was disrespectful to the Chelsea supporters' trust initially in saying that this file, or this letter would be filed under miscellaneous and like thrown away, basically. I'm not sure that's actually happening. But he does wind in at the back of... Because he was an owner himself, a chairman and an owner of Crystal Palace. And, um, you know, when it was posed to him, so what, these fans, like, our customers don't mean anything. No, he said, no, they are the fabric of Chelsea Football Club and they're really important but he they you know they need to recognize I think the the, the greater scheme of things where they are what's happening and I'll tell you what I think well if you're a long-term viewer you probably know my position on this I'm not happy because I'm a Chelsea fan and above all above all I just want to see <laughs> I just want to see Chelsea win you know I want to see Chelsea win and um our expectations were juiced up because we spent a lot of money. You know, <laughs> and you're supposed to get like hyped up when you buy Enzo Fernandez after winning the World Cup, when you beat Liverpool to signing Caicedo despite them having a £112 million bid accepted for Brighton. You know, this we're winning transfer windows. We stole Mudrick of Arsenal. This is all exciting, high octane, dopamine inducing stuff. Do you know what I mean? Well, of course you're going to get excited. But, and, it, and, and it's part of the um, marketability of Chelsea, like the brand. Yeah, get jacked up because we've got these players. Woohoo! Like this is, you know, they wouldn't want it any other way, right? But like, <laughs> it's almost like that what would be most helpful is after we sign these players, is there's this delegation of like someone either digitally or gives 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 a phone call to every single Chelsea fan in the world and says, hey guys, yeah, it's exciting. We signed all these guys. Yeah, they're actually all really inexperienced and they've got their own personal problems. Mudrick's coming from a war-torn country and, you know, Enzo's, um, you know, got to learn this position and partnership and, you know, he hasn't actually stopped playing football for like two years and he's never had a week off and this and any other. And actually, do you know what can happen? Because we've got a whole new regime and, and staff and infrastructure this could be like last season you know it could be uh so don't get too excited don't expect to you know because it, it's for your own mental health you could have someone that like, explains it and says actually like i said it's um it's a development early investment that will take time to to pay dividends but they're not going to tell you that because just in case just in case in the off chance bro it pops off and we finish in the top four and uh win both cups you know, the very small chance that happens, um, you know, you, you don't want to make everyone like, you want people to believe, you know, and, Poch and it doesn't help Pochettino coming in going, yeah, this is Chelsea, no excuses, you know, on his appointment, no excuses, mate, this is Chelsea, to now going, well, let's see my latest excuse, <laughs> let me just open my excuse book here, and, um, you know, I get like someone probably told him to say all that stuff when he was first appointed. And I understand why he's going for excuses. Look, <clears throat> again, transparency. I don't give a ruddy so-and-so about Pochettino at this point. <clears throat> he can go, but I'm also welcome. I'm also happy for him to suddenly do a lot better and stay because that means he's doing better and Chelsea's better. 
look, the, the proof will be in the pudding. I'll let you know in the summer how I feel. But, uh, yeah, it's just, we are just where we are, man. Like, it sucks. And, um, look, the owners aren't going anywhere. You've got to support the players. Like, like, Raheem Sterling's been terrible. And I would, ha- I, I don't want Pochettino to start him in the next game because he's been bad. But if he starts, don't boo him. Like, it needs to be cultivating a supportive atmosphere. That's just how I feel. I'm not going to tell other fans how to behave. I think the Chelsea supporters trust are well within their right to express themselves and, you know, and do what they think is right in, to, in the defense of the Chelsea fan base. And largely, I endorse everything they said. And also, if you pay a lot of money that you earn in an expensive sport to go and watch someone that is ruining your time and in their performance who earns a lot of money, then yeah, you can boo them if you want. I wouldn't. I don't agree with it. But I'm not telling anyone else how to behave. Sorry, I've gone off on a mega tangent here. Anyway, go watch that video by um, Simon Jordan, or of Simon Jordan speaking on TalkSport. He does, I think he's a bit like disrespectful and dismissive of the Chelsea Supporters Trust, but maybe he does highlight a couple of good points. But ultimately, we're not going to be able to change anything at the moment. The only thing that we have the power of doing is supporting what is a talented group of young players when they play, and we'll see what happens. Let me know what you think, though. Comment down below. Um, Hopefully, you found my commentary on this uh, developing sort of story, I guess, uh, interesting and insightful. Let me know if you do like it. Thank you for supporting the content, as always, uh, by liking and subscribing. And, uh, yeah, man, hopefully see you guys back here very, very soon. Every day. Every day. Peace.